Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Hi, everybody. It's Sunday. It's August 1st. Time for another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. What you know, Fruit Loop? Um, I'm old. (laughs) I know that that my, I I don't know if it's arthritis. I don't know what it is, but it hurts. I'm getting over this head thing too, so. I know. I've been kind of sick. Like, my kids have all been sick. I've been sick. Two days ago, I think I slept 18 hours out of 24 I just that's, took nap after, comatose. nap after nap after nap. And then yesterday, didn't do anything. Literally laid in my bed and watched TV and played my video game and just took care of me. But I guess sometimes we all need to do that. Oh, yeah. So yeah. we just want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. Uh, I've got to put pictures up of the new pillows that she sent us. Uh, they're so cool. They're so comfy and I I'm, use it every day. <laughs> oh, I'm that I'm loving that pillow. Yep. So if you guys are interested in maybe doing something with your old t-shirts, check her out to cool t-shirt quilts.com slash pretty lies and alibis. And, uh, High yeah. quality. It is really good. Quality. Like, they're I'm, really soft. I've seen some people have them done. Yeah. These. Yeah. Like, they're different. High quality. They are. Yeah. They're very nice. Yeah. So Sherlock, um, you know, I told you guys, it's really, really hard to keep this cat in at this point. Um, he just, he's very fast. And I have a dog door because my dogs need to go in and out. And he just goes in and out. So I've, I've just stopped fighting it. And I know there's trouble outside, but he's had his vaccination. So we just cross our fingers. But this cat's going to every, like he's going to four different people's houses now and eating and just chilling in their house. <laughs> he ended up your brother's other night, right? Yeah. So I get a text at seven in the morning. If you're looking for your cat he spent the night over here because <laughs> my brother lives across the street from me so maggie on youtube cracked me up today literally shot coffee through my nose she said i should use a high-pitched voice and go around and say sorry neighbors <laughs> <laughs> Lori style yeah um so and we just want to give a big thank you to debbie for the paypal donation we just got that right before we went on and debbie is uh always taking care of us and we, we really awesome. really appreciate it thank you debbie so and before you guys before we get started i just want to say um we have a lot of new listeners from when i was on the scott rice channel um crime talk live so we just want to welcome everybody and also we typically sit and chat for about five minutes before we dive into the stories that's just kind of how we roll so if you don't want to hear us talk about our kids or whatever um just skip about five minutes check in see if we're over it but we just we're Southern. We talk. Yeah. We Just talk about everything. Bit. So pageants. Um, I don't know how two of the biggest tomboys ever born, you and I, uh, you helped way more than I did. I helped the day of. You helped set this thing up. How we got involved in a, a kid's pageant. But um, can I just say it was interesting? Yeah. I yeah, it was interesting. That's oh some God. interesting folks. Yes. So no offense to anybody whose kids do pageants. I never let my kids do it. I just didn't feel like that was right for our family. Um, but I told the pageant mom kind of how it was in very few words after this pageant. Yeah. Uh. 
I don't speak out to people usually that I don't know. But okay, so I'm walking to my car. It's late. It's close to 11 o'clock. And there's a woman carrying what I think to be about a three-year-old kid. And she's telling her, you didn't kiss, blow kisses at the judges. You didn't shake your hips. And finally, I turned around and I said, really? She's three. Like, yeah. are you seriously fussing at your three-year-old because she didn't perform? Ah, oh, I just can't. Yeah. I mean, most of the girls seemed to have fun. The parents enjoyed it, but, whew. It was inter- that was my first one, so. Yeah, m- mine too. I, I think I maybe went to the ones in high school because I had a friend who was in them every year, but I've never been in small kids. Yeah, it was definitely different. Yep. Yep. Oh, boy. So, you have a big thing this week. My baby, my firstborn, turned 16 on Tuesday. That and is so scary. I am not handling my children growing up very well, Fruit Loop. It's, it's bittersweet because I love who she's becoming I, I love who she is I mean she knows who she is she's unapologetically herself she dresses like she stepped out of Woodstock um and but she carries it like she she rocks it she does and she, but she's like the kind of soul yeah I think I've ever met I mean this girl roots for everybody and yeah. she speaks up for those who can't speak up for themselves and it's really really cool to kind of get this front row seat to watching all three of my kids become these awesome young people. And, um, but yeah, 16, big, big deal. Gonna spoil her rotten on Tuesday. Just, I mean, like, I want it to be the best day ever for her. Oh, yeah. So cool. Yep. Yeah. Happy birthday early, Taylor. That's right. So she don't I, listen. No, I know she doesn't. And it's weird. I get it because it's like mom and aunt Fruit Loop, you yeah. know, and it's so she knows us away from the podcast, but all of her friends listen. I know. And right? they're like, the podcast is good. I like hey, it. Hey, Diego. What's up, Diego? Yeah. That's our, that's my daughter is one of her best friends in the world. Yeah. He's and, awesome. And he listens and we love Diego. Yeah. So podcast changes. We have said this before. We are working to get a setup where we start recording every single podcast episode as we're doing it. And um, a lot of you have asked for that because you're visual and I am too. So we're working to get that. And once we get that set up, definitely going to do another live. Okay. We need to do the cooking live because it was funny. It was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could do a live on that because it's not very long. It's not like you have to no. let stuff simmer for 30 minutes. They're in the pokey. No. You know, they got like a sink and a toilet. Exactly. And all of it's used to make stuff and it's gross. But yeah, it was pretty gross. We're not using my toilet, y'all. No. That's when you no make toilet. that's when you make hooch. I think they make it in the toilet. I don't know. Uh, that's disgusting. You gotta be I mean, if no. you're into pokey, I guess anything helps pass the time, Mm-mm. but I would not drink I would some not drink out of the toilet to pass time. Rotten fruit stuff. Negative. Stickers, sorry guys, still not out. I've been lazy. Uh I will get them out this week, I promise. If you're new to the podcast, uh send us an email, pretty lies and alibis at gmail dot com. Tell us uh the keyword is Sherlock, which is my cat that is sitting right behind me right now, I might add. He How just, did he get back in there? Is he Houdini? Yeah, he is. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm sure people wonder, how did he get in the house? But well, there Mason it is. took him out. And the door never opened. Wow. Well, I don't know. Go figure. He probably opened it behind us and closed it back, probably. Probably so. <laughs> yeah. So, Colby was on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, said he forgave his mom. Yeah. It was a very touching video, full of emotion. Um, And I'm sure this is just, you know, we've never been in Colby's situation by any sense of the word. It's it's a big burden. So I guess maybe you just have to get to that point in order to grow as a person or not let it drag you under. You have to forgive. And he was very open and honest and very raw in his feelings. And the one thing I like about Colby is he's not afraid to cry on camera. Um, he shows his emotions. And I think that that's such a healthy thing. But, you know, I think the thing, too, is... Colby's going to have to forgive his mom many times over, I think. Um, And I'm glad that he, excuse me, I'm glad that he recognizes that that's going to be his way to emotional freedom from all of this. Um, But I I think as time goes on and we learn more and more and more, um, he seems like a very strong man. And um, I just, I, I feel so bad for him, really. I do, but he's, he's using his faith to navigate these waters and that's the best thing for him to do I yeah. think is to lean on that yeah and like we talked about it's going to be something new each time yeah like you're going to continue to hear new stuff that you didn't know 
Mm-hmm. And I feel like it starts that whole process over. Yeah. And that's why I say he's going to have to forgive her probably continuously throughout his life. Yeah. Um, but at least he understands that for his own well-being as a husband, as a father, soon to be two, um, you know, they have a new baby on the way that, I mean, he's just very open with it. And uh, so it just, my heart broke for him watching it again. It's got to be really hard to forgive somebody who took every everybody in your family. Yeah. away from you so selfishly um yeah so anyways one thing um that scott reich said when we did the live and i've had a lot of little questions about this is sometimes we do get information before it's public yeah we have people reach out to us uh, many different people from different walks of life different prof- professions whatever um but we do get stuff that's sensitive to the case and um a lot of every time so far we've never put it out (laughs) and here's the thing okay so for example we knew the murder charges were going to drop about a week before they did um and we talked about saying something but ultimately we decided that those investigators and rob wood and everybody has worked very hard on this case and it's it's his thing to announce not ours um i don't know i just kind of feel like i don't ever want to put something out there for clicks and then undermine law enforcement or investigators because as we saw last week and we're not going to get into the whole drama about this phone recording but sometimes um podcasters youtubers can put themselves in the middle of these cases and and can cause things to go wrong so um somebody was like well why don't you guys tell us all this information you guys get on the side because we don't ever want to do that no um it's just not worth it for me and fruit loop either one um i don't want a family member to hear it from this podcast when maybe somebody was going to call them the next day that kind sure. of thing um you know we just go with the flow and trust the process it's and not worth it it's, it's really not um I, and i don't ever want to be the source of pain for a family member nope ever and if we ever do that, then I just assume turn these mics off and never come back to them. Yeah. It's just kind of how we were raised. And, um, but at the same time, what we do is a big responsibility. Yeah. And we have a lot of listeners. And for us to put things out there that we can't 100% verify, um, kind of feels irresponsible on our part. But it does help us navigate certain episodes if we know things that, that we're not putting out there. Um, but... Yeah, so people were like, well, why don't you guys tell us? I don't think we'll ever be that podcast. No. <laughs> That's going to tell you guys things that aren't announced yet. I just, it, I, I think it's a walking in a minefield. No, it is. And then sometimes if something changes, then you you look dumb. Right, because exactly. you came out and said something. And yeah, and like, we don't no. want to look dumb. I mean, we're human. Yeah, don't it's like me. predicting the, the world's going to end. Yeah. Well, yeah Chad, <laughs> old chatty boy. That was a big bust, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're still here. Yeah. All right. So what about the death penalty? We're coming up on that. So the prosecution still, they have one week from today to yep. seek the death penalty. Yep. If Wood does seek death, uh, we will learn more about the horrible details about the crimes. Um, yeah. He's got to justify his decision to seek death. Uh, you know, like, you know, why is he doing so? Yeah. And I think that's going to be tough um, because that is public. That stuff is public is able to be put out in the public so if he seeks death um it's just going to open up an avenue of um because everybody's so emotionally invested in this case it's like we feel like we know tammy and charles and jj and tiley and and joe and um so it's and it kind of goes back to what i was saying about colby he's going to have to forgive over and over and over it's not going to be a one and done thing for him um but Am I interested to learn more details? Yes, of course. We're invested in this case and we want to know more to understand. But it's, yeah, I think it's going to be a tough week for the family if he goes for death and then this, this, you know, statement comes out as to why. Sure. So we shall see. Um, So you read something on the law in Idaho. Yeah. So Lori Hellis, we always talk about her um, newsletters and they're great. Just Google Lori Hellis, Lori Vallow story, and you'll see her webpage. And she comes out with, um, I think Lori Hellis and Scott Reich are the two legal talking heads that we really, really rely on to understand things that we might not. But she was um, talking about Idaho law as, as to why she thinks he will go for the death penalty, which is in Idaho, 
you can't give a sentence of natural life in prison without the possibility of parole unless the death penalty was on the table and the jury rejected that as a form of punishment. So I don't know that I see Rob Wood uh, chancing them ever being eligible for parole. I think he kind of has to do it. Yeah. Um, so if he doesn't seek death, they would be eligible for parole according to Idaho law. Right. But I think it's at the judge's discretion. You gotcha. know, he could say after 40 years, I mean, they're in their 40s. So, I mean, you do the math. That's almost a life sentence. It, it really is. But yeah. I think they'll both get, they'll never be free. Um, but then again, we don't know for sure he's going to do it. There there are people who think he won't. Um, but we shall see. And I think we will know something um, maybe by the end of the week, first of next week at the latest, because the deadline's up on the 8th, which is one week from today, and they don't work on Sunday or Saturday. So I think either Friday or Monday, and we'll know for sure. Yeah. So Rachel Smith is yes. in as prosecutor. Yeah. So she was in on these other charges that were dropped, and we're going to get into that. But there was a, f- a filing for a pro hoc viche. Oh, VJ. Oh, nailed it. Pro, y'all remember, <laughs> y'all that listen, remember, we called it a... Uh, Pro Hoc Vice. Pro Hoc Vice, that was it. Yep, that was it. So the judge approved her on July 29th for the murder charges, and now she can appear in court um, for that stuff. I'm ready to see, like, I want to hear her and see how she, like, I want to I want to see some, see her. Yeah. In action. Like, we know what Rob Wood, like, we know him. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to see if she's, like, a, you know, no no holes bar, like, round. (laughs) Well, you know, uh, there's a reason that she was brought in, and her specifically out of state, and I trust that Rob Wood knows what she brings to the table, and it's just going to solidify everything against these people, so um, I'm really glad she's on. Now, I feel like you want to play, like, Stone Cold music coming in. I know, yeah, right? She the, needs her and Rob both need intro music like exactly. wrestlers. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta. Okay, so I'm gonna have to start thinking of their intro songs because you know that's my jam. Yeah. Um, I'm, I've been posting music on our social media because that's just me. So just yeah, every so now and then you figure that one out. What would be Rob Wood and Rachel Smith's walk in music? Okay, so I'm when I when it comes to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna post it. Yeah, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna yeah. do their their song. If they were coming into the arena, what would they play? See, I would. I would do. Uh, I'm just a like. I grew up with wrestling, so Ric Flair. Woo. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would do his. Da, 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 uh, da, da. Yeah, oh, I didn't watch I think wrestling. That's what 2000 Space Odyssey or something. Uh, oh yeah, I that's think what so. the Game Cops um, come out to. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Go Tigers. Mm-hmm. Um, see, I never watched wrestling, and I really should have my Southern Carb revoked because I've never watched a NASCAR race, and I've never watched wrestling. Do you know how many grandmothers in the South watched wrestling back when Ric Flair and the Four Horsemen were on? Oh, yeah, that and oh, that yeah. Days of Our Lives. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, anyways, um, <clears throat> there was an order sealing the state's response in rejection of entry counsel in the finding of a conflict. It was filed by the defense. We don't know why they filed it because it's not public, but Scott Rice said it really should be public. He doesn't understand why some of this stuff is under seal. Um, So we're not sure. And uh, so what about Rachel? Where is she from? Um, She is from uh, Missouri. There you go. Um, And now in a limited capacity in Idaho for these murder charges. Okay, wow. so can I just say our social media was off the charts this week when Rob Wood dismissed those Madison County charges. Which, if you've listened to us from the get-go, we said it was coming. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. This happens a lot in big cases that involve murder of multiple people and that kind of thing. Yeah. So what did he drop? So he uh, dis- he dropped two counts of conspiracy to compete. <laughs> Commit concealment, destruction, or alteration of evidence. And that was for Lori and Chad. And then two counts of destruction, concealment, or alteration of evidence. And that was just Chad. So, okay, can I just say this cat is kneading my back right now. And he's very lightly putting his claws in my lower back. And so if you guys hear me make a noise, that's why. Well, at least he didn't grab your leg. That's what he normally does. Yeah. So why would Rob Wood drop these charges? Well, at the time... They could only prove these charges and not murder. So, I mean, to put it like out there, we didn't get murder charges until last month. 
these charges of the conspiracy and the destruction and the concealment and alteration of evidence, that's what got Chad into custody. And it kept Lori in there. For sure. Until we got the big ones. They had, and, and we've been going through these documents, and it's very tedious. And this is only a portion of Chandler, Arizona documents, not to mention Idaho, Hawaii, everything. So Rob wasn't ready to file murder charges last June when we found the kids. It had to be a process to make sure he did it right. Because when you file charges, you, you're essentially saying, I can go to court right now and prove these charges. Yeah. So you see it a lot. You know, I always talk about the first 48. What they'll do is if they have a suspect that they think may have been involved in a homicide, they will always check and see if there are any outstanding warrants for that person. They will go pick them up on that and try to get them to talk about the homicide. They almost make it seem like we know something you don't know, which they do. And then a lot of times what you'll find is these people end up admitting to murder. And half the time I always say it was like self-defense or whatever. But it's a placeholder. So yeah. it's um we we got these murder charges um on June 24th was when I believe June 24th was when we got the charges or the announced that the June or May ah uh, maybe it was I, I don't think it was May we haven't known about murder charges for two months I think I made a boo boo on the month but anyways I'm sorry there's so many dates only I mean it boils down to it kept them in jail. Exactly. It got them arrested. It kept both of them in jail. Right. Now let's move on to the bigger charges and go get them Rob. Right. And you have to understand this too. You don't want to dirty up. I don't want to say dirty up. You don't want to confuse the jury or give them anything to fall back on. So let's say that you've got a couple of jurors that aren't convinced that Lori knew what was going on. They're going to play dumb, I think. I think they're going to both say, I didn't know this was happening. They're going to blame it all on Alex. He's yeah. dead. He can't answer to any of it. So the natural thing to do, it, oh, this cat, is just blame the dead guy. But the thing is, we know Chad lives at that property, and we know that that grave was already dug before they brought JJ because he was only there, I think, 17 minutes on the property. Yeah. So we can safely assume Chad dug the grave, made the excuse for the gunshot, whatever, the bonfires. But all Pryor has to do is put some reasonable doubt in these jurors' minds. Hey, Chad had no clue. He said he was going to come back there and you know do some digging for something. There are ways, and I know it sounds stupid because it's very obvious Chad had his hand in it, literally. But it's a scary thing. I don't think he wants to, aside from the fact that these are placeholder charges and they often get dropped um, because they're bigger charges, I don't think Rob Wood wants to get a not guilty on anything. That no. he puts before a jury if he were to combine these charges. And all it takes is one juror to think, well, hey, I mean, his phone was never there. Alex Ping there. I mean, Chad's phone pings don't matter on his property. And I don't think they have Lori's phone ping there. I really I'm don't. interested to see. So I think that's why they can still use this evidence in the murder trial. They can, to make it a whole picture. But, um, and, and. I mean, I think the important thing is this. What about the charges being dismissed without prejudice? So the charges were dismissed without prejudice. So Rob Wood can bring these charges back if it falls within the st statute of limitations, which is typically five years for felonies in Idaho. Yeah. And, and let me say, we some people have speculated, is this part of a plea deal? I don't see it. I think Rob Wood can go in there and nail these guys to the wall with all these murders. Yeah, I think he's what we're seeing with this evidence and the, you know, whatever he's got, I think, I think, yeah. Yeah. And I'm confident with him. A hundred percent. And we have to trust uh, that Rob Wood has the best interest of justice in his mind. And, um, you know, I'm, he may have consulted with the families about this and, and told them the risk of taking this to trial with the murder charges. Who knows? But Scott Reich, in the end, he said the, the, the charges aren't a huge deal. And it is for us because we want every single charge to be you know, for them to face those charges and be found guilty. Um, but we just have to trust the process. And sure. in the end, they can still bring these back and do it. And maybe he will. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then what about um, East Idaho News? So East Idaho has provided information relating to their coverage on the Vallow Daybell case. Uh, there was originally a subpoena for Nate to testify, if y'all remember that part. 
um, at the change of venue hearing, but Pryor withdrew it. So East Idaho News compiled. Complied. Blah, 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 complied. Because the information is already public. Yeah. And so they fought the subpoena. Uh, they were like, no, Nate's not testifying in your little hearing. Uh, but he withdrew it. So they just went ahead and gave them. And it's very transparent. It's uh, on their website. You can visit their website and they'll show you everything they handed over to Pryor, which essentially is everything they posted about this. So I hated to be the person that had to had to get all that stuff together. Oh, I know. Right? It's been a lot. So we were talking about Lori Hellis, and this has to do with Melanie Gibb. Um, a lot of people since this phone call have come out have, you know, rightfully so, said she knew stuff. And a lot of people have wondered why she wasn't arrested for knowing in advance possibly that Charles was going to be murdered. Um, so we're just going to talk about that for a second. And this is read from her newsletter. So we're just giving her credit. These are her words. And you could, again, go to find Lori Hellis online, subscribe to that, and then you can read this and everything else she put because it's all very interesting and very... She um, breaks it down so simple. Yeah, and it's very yeah. layman terms, just like yeah. Scott Reich. I mean, you can watch him and not know a lick about crime or the legalities of things. And then when you get done, you feel a little smarter. Yep. That's how I feel when I read Lori and Lori stuff and, and Lori Hellis stuff and watch Scott. Yep. So when does a duty arise for an ordinary citizen to report a crime? Interesting question. There's no obligation for a citizen to report a crime. There is an obligation for a citizen to abstain from criminal behavior. As long as the witness does nothing to further or cover up the crime, there's no criminal liability. So in Arizona, for falsely reporting or lying to police, that is a class one misdemeanor with up to six months in jail and a $2,500 fine. So what do we think about why ultimately Melanie Gibb, for one, has not faced charges? Well, her testimony and cooperation are worth more um, than what they could charge her with. Yeah, and I'm really glad that Lori put this out there because we, you know, we've kind of heard this a lot. People have varying opinions about Melanie Gibb from, oh, I think she was just a little ditzy to she knew everything. I don't think they obviously don't have much, you know, other than her ramblings to prove uh, she helped. And that would kind of be what she would face charges for if i understand the law correctly yeah i mean i think when you look at the at chad's case um, because we know Lori and means waived her um preliminary uh in chad's i mean it helped say yeah there is enough evidence right um mm -hmm. so yeah and, and what was it too you you brought up a really good point because a lot of people had speculated she made a plea deal yeah uh prior if you remember prior asked her on the stand did you do or did you get did you receive a plea deal from the prosecution? And she quickly said no. Were so, you offered a plea deal from the prosecution? And she said no. Yeah. So that was just something interesting, and I think that that Lori Hellis really hit on it because that's been a lot of what I've seen online this week, which is just sort of okay. But at what point could she be arrested? I don't know. I'm just not. I mean, as much as I think she knew things. I, Clearly, there's just no criminal liability that they can prove. Okay, here's my thing: if Chad can get off with that, right? I right. mean, they said you know they don't they they're not charging him with that. So, well, oh yeah, that's a good that's a good comparison with Charles's uh, conspiracy to commit murder for Charles. Yes, yes, that's a really good point, and we yep. know he knew beforehand. But oh, if yeah. he didn't conspire, if they can't prove. Yeah. Whether he did or not, I would probably say he helped them plan things. But if they can't prove it um, with electronic messages, which is going to be the only way unless they had him pinged in Arizona when this happened. Sure. But like Kay said, they, they seem to be very far apart when these crimes are committed to reduce liability, which is a form of... Um, Oh, gosh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, premeditation. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, they're um, planning to be a part, so they're nowhere near what's going on. That's going to come into play in the prosecution's case, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. So um, what about severing cases? We've had people ask us about this lately, too. Yeah, I mean, prior will probably file again, right? I think so, but, you know, it's kind of happened organically on its own because Chad has a trial date set. Yep. Lori does not. She hasn't even made her first appearance. If you remember, she was there, and then they stopped it. Yep. And now we know, and we kind of theorized it was mental health issue, and that's what it was. Yeah. So the only thing I wonder, um, if prosecutors seek death, I feel like Chad's trial is going to be pushed back a little bit. Although Scott says the thing to do is go. 
like go 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 don't give the prosecution any more time to to get all their you know ducks in a row yeah um but um yeah we think he'll he'll probably file to sever again and you know we'll see what happens right now they're kind of already severed true i mean if Pryor's ready to go in november and mark means is not how do you remedy that Dude, I, I don't know. I don't this think is, Mark Means ain't gonna be ready to go in 2050. <laughs> no. Oh, that's funny. No. Oh, I hate making fun of people, but that I was do a good, too. I'm sorry. That was a good one though. It's not nice. Sorry, no, that was funny. What'd your what, mama say? If you can't got no, nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. That did not stop us in that pageant booth when we were back there by ourselves, and we that's were not true. making fun of we're the kids. Not making fun of the kids at all. Making fun of them mamas. Yeah. Whew, I they mean, get that, into that stuff. Dude, that was one mom. She's shaking her hips harder than the kid. I was like, yeah. she's blowing bigger kisses to the judges. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man. But then there were some moms you could tell were just letting their kids enjoy it. And they, some of the kids seemed like they loved it. That's what Taylor said. My daughter's helped backstage a little bit. And she said there were kids that definitely loved the competition. And then she saw a healthy amount of moms pushing their kids um, when they were tired or frustrated or yeah. whatever. So that's kind of what we're going to do today. Like we say, we're trying to keep our episodes specific to one case so this week we really need to catch up in the Murdoch case. There's um, a lot of stuff that's been released. Fitz News has put so much out there. And um, the other thing that I'm going to do this week is take the time to break down the three different statements by Lori, Alex, and Tylee that were given in the police station the day Charles was murdered. And try to find some discrepancies to point those out. There are a lot. In fact, it was said in there that... Um, there were discrepancies in their statements and then what the actual evidence was. Yeah. So, so you did a, a cool little quick video. Oh on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. did. I just, well, I was sitting here on the computer and somebody, I read a comment where somebody was like, I just don't get why you have to remove the, the tire from the back of the Jeep to open that window. So I just did a little quick minute and a half demonstration. Cause I have a Jeep and you can't lift that window up to raise it. If that tire rack and then the, um, the brake light that's above the tire rack is on you can there's big bolts you can take that off and that's what happened somebody made a good point that i didn't say in the video is that if you remember they had the back seats of that jeep in that storage unit too yep it could be sometimes in the four-door jeeps the there's a big hump so it's like if you watch the video of my jeep it lays flat because it's a, it's an unlimited so it's a longer uh, the boots longer essentially but in some older jeeps um they lay the the tires fold but it's not a flush and like i at first i said chad was or chad alex was short and then i was i quickly was like no no he was tall yeah. so i just wanted to demonstrate so i put the seats down and showed how you would have to remove that tire and that back um uh, brake light in order to open that window and it's kind of hydraulic i would assume maybe he propped it on the gun yeah. Because otherwise it's wide open. So after I watched the video back, I thought maybe he just kind of stuck the the extender. What do you call it? The Not the extender. It's like a silencer. It's like a long muzzle. Yeah. Maybe just, okay, you know. What, the guy on our YouTube channel. Subrosa. Yeah. yeah he's Sub awesome. Rosa, he'll let us know. Yes. So anyway, so go check that out. It's on YouTube. I tweeted it out and Facebooked it. And um, so, yeah, it was just kind of a little demonstration. But a lot of people said it, that people that don't have Jeeps, it made sense to them after seeing that. So, yeah. there you go. And that's what we were talking about. I actually have never seen a picture of the Jeep. Yeah, it was a two-door, I'm pretty sure I saw in these documents, actually, that because when they were doing surveillance, they talked about the two-door Jeep. Yeah. And Mine's an unlimited. It's a four-door. Well, my only question would be, if it was a soft top, why would you need to remove the tire? So you, you it had wouldn't. to be hard top. Yeah, I think you're right. Because um, the soft top, you just roll it up. Yeah, you can totally just unzip it and stick a barrel of a gun through that. So yeah, yeah I think you're right. It had, had to be a hard, hard top. top. Yeah. yeah. Or otherwise, they just made a lot of work for themselves that totally to say, gave them away. On morons. And you think about it, I mean, they were seen rolling that tire out, in and out, and then the back seat as well. And then, you know, yeah. Chad gives her a little booty dap on that. So, yeah. so again, Bo dumb Who? dumb criminals did, did this stuff on surveillance. And there's just so much we don't know that's That's what caught. I don't understand about that. Like, every storage facility has cameras. They're morons. Yeah. So stupid. They were in a hurry. The Maybe they end thought of the world was they coming. Were, they had like the invisible cloak like off Harry Potter. <laughs> They're walking around without it. Oh, my gosh. If I had one of those, nobody would be safe. Oh, I know, right? Oh, man. I mess with all kind of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Poking people. Heck, yeah. 
Um, yeah. So anyways, that's all we have for today. Like I say, later in the week, uh, not Tuesday, that's my girl's day, Sweet 16. So maybe about Wednesday, we're going to have um, another episode out for you guys. And you're going to be able to be here a little bit more during the day. So once school starts, we'll, we'll get into a more routine of these days, you can pretty much expect episodes. But, you know... Um, it's becoming a full-time job, but you have a job. Yep. And so sometimes that um, that gets in the way, but we try to keep them coming out for you guys. Yep. All right. Well, you guys have a good rest of your evening. We will see you about midweek. Good night. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.